customer brought in the weirdest combination of PC parts I've ever seen. Now, some of these PC parts absolutely do not belong together in the same PC build, but some of them are really not that bad, like this SSD that's 256 gigs. It's not terrible, not the best, but you know. He had a 650 watt power supply from EVGA. It was 80 plus gold certified, and that's a very solid power supply here in 2023 for those low to mid range builds. I was not a huge fan of the case. It was some sort of MSI case. Had an RGB strip on it, but there was almost no airflow coming in from the front panel, and he only had like two fans in there. He does have dual channel RAM. It's 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM at 3200 megahertz, so that's definitely a plus. He's got a really nice B550 Tomahawk motherboard with a Ryzen 3800X, but with a stock cooler. And the weirdest part of all is a GT1030. Now, I've never seen a GT1030 like this. I guess it's some sort of OEM model, but nonetheless, paired with a 3800X is a pretty strange combination. Now, he gave us a budget of $2,000 to work with to try to make this thing into a gaming beast, so make sure you stay tuned to the end so you can see how it turns out and those gaming benchmarks. Now, to upgrade this really strange PC, we gotta figure out what exactly we're gonna keep from this old build. While some of the parts are okay, we're not gonna to keep them all. The best part about this build was the B550 MSI Tomahawk motherboard. It does have multiple M.2 slots as well as four RAM slots. It is able to house any AM4 CPU that we could possibly choose. There's a little bit of foreshadowing there. We're also going to keep the 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's Corsair Vengeance RAM, which is a really solid brand. It's at 3200 megahertz, which is above 3000, so we're pretty good on the AM4 side. And 16 gigabytes, if you're only gaming, is still perfectly fine here in 2023. Other games might eat up some RAM, but it's really not going to give you that much more FPS. Now, it may not be much, but that's all we're keeping. We're getting rid of the case. We're getting rid of the power supply. The SSD was only 256 gigabytes, so we're not going to keep that. And the CPU and the CPU cooler is no good to us either. Now, the customer likes to play Warzone and Call of Duty as one of the main games that they're going to play. So go ahead and make your predictions down in the comments on what parts you think we might actually use for the rest of this build. Some of you probably already know, but don't tell anybody. Now, let's talk about upgrading this weird gaming PC because this GT 1030 is not going to cut it. Now, we could go with an RTX 4090. That would be a beast and it's the best card you can get right now but that would eat up our entire budget and would defeat the purpose so we decided to go with the next best thing and that is the 7900 xtx we decided to go with this sapphire pulse version we found on amazon for only 915 dollars that's a good deal now, this graphics card has 24 gigs of vram it's going to be able to play 1440p and 4k on ultra settings at some high refresh rates we're talking over 100 fps 1440p you're going to be pushing that 170 180 in a lot of games since we chose the 7900 xtx TX, we've got to beef up the power supply. He only had a 650 watt power supply, so we're going to need some more juice. The recommended power supply, if you Google, is 750 watts, but we wanted to give him a little bit more just in case he does want to upgrade in the future. He will not have to change out his power supply. So we decided to go with this MSI Mag power supply. It come in at like $170. It's got enough plugs for the PCIe that we're going to need because this Sapphire Pulse card requires three PCIe plugs, so we're good to go on that. Since we're keeping the customer's B550 Tomahawk motherboard from MSI, we needed to get the best gaming processor we could get for the AM4 platform. And that's none other than the Ryzen 5800 X3D. This CPU is a beast. It's got eight cores and 16 threads, but the best part is that ever coveted 3D V cache that is straight up meant for gaming. It can pretty much handle any GPU that we throw at it at 1440p or 4K inside this budget that we have to work with. Now the 5800 X3D runs a little warm and so we're gonna need a good cooling solution. However, we didn't wanna waste a ton of money on a liquid AIO cooler because the customer is not super tech savvy and we don't want them to have to replace it and air coolers last just a little bit longer. So we went with this beefy air cooler from ID Cooling, the 226XT in black. It was mixed reviews on whether this cooler would actually work. So we're gonna test it out here in just a little while after we get everything put together and you can be the judge of whether you think it kept it cool or not. Since more and more games are starting to add an SSD to the recommended requirements, we're gonna throw in a two terabyte SSD from Team Group. We can pick this up for only $90 off Amazon. It is Gen 4. And for the case, we went with the O11 knockoff a Manson case from Amazon and we picked up some all black fans all together this cost us about $130 because the customer didn't really care if there was RGB so we went with the stealth black look and this PC looks awesome go ahead and let me know what you think about this PC so far down in the comments and let's hop into some benchmarks we're going to test all these games at 1440p and 4k for the most part on highs of ultra settings in warzone 2.0 we first tried the game only 4k ultra preset settings with no upscaling technology so no FSR no fidelity cap 
ass, just straight up ultra 4K. And I was amazed at the results. With only 16 gigabytes of RAM, we were still getting 135 to 150 FPS. That's pretty good. Warzone was the game I was a little bit worried about because it eats so much RAM, but we had no performance loss here. And when we turned on FSR 2.1 on these 4K ultra preset settings, it jumped the FPS up to 200 FPS. It dropped down to 180 a few times, but 180 to 200 FPS in Warzone at 4K is absolutely crazy. At 1440p ultra settings, no upscaling technologies used, we had over 200 FPS. 200 to 220 is kind of where it sat throughout the match, and I thought that was pretty awesome. You didn't see a huge difference when you turned FSR on on 1440p, so I didn't really put that in the video. Next up is the game that's really been growing on me, and that's Halo Infinite. If you haven't played this since release, you gotta try it again. Halo is pretty demanding and it has been crippling for some of the systems that I've tried it on to get a high refresh rate experience because at the end of the day it's still an FPS game and you want that high refresh rate. So with that in mind we chose to go with the high preset settings instead of the ultra instead of completely maxing it out. It still looks really really good and the playable experience was off the charts. 4k at these high preset settings we got anywhere from 130 to 140 FPS which is absolutely insane I was able to rack up the eliminations. And at 1440p, it only got better. We got 200 to 220 FPS. Never seen numbers like this. Too bad I'm not getting to keep this PC. And if you notice, even with the cheaper air cooler, the 5800X3D stays around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. But how much FPS could we get in Apex Legends and CSGO 2? Well, we tried it in 1440p and 4K. Apex Legends at the max settings on 4K, we got over 200 FPS, which is absolutely crazy. And if you put it on 1440p, it maxed out at 300. Even with the coat you put in Steam to get over 144 FPS, it still got 300 and it stopped right there. So that's as high as I guess this game goes. CSGO 2 is a little bit more demanding. At 4K, we only got like 140 to 150 FPS, but at 1440p, it absolutely crushed it with 300 fps these were on the very high preset settings so i thought it was pretty awesome these are more cpu based games i guess you would say even though apex does require a decent graphics card but this is more fps than the casual gamer is going to need and it was just awesome to play these games at these numbers now for everyone's favorite battle royale good old fortnite there is a stigma that comes behind running fortnite with amd gpus but that stems from some of their older models which did struggle but when you get to a high-end system like this you're not going to have any problems with fortnite but just for fun we did pump the settings up just to see See what it would do because if you turn the right settings on it does stress out your gpu we didn't do any ray tracing with this because who's going to play fortnite with ray tracing on but i digress so at 4k epic settings we're talking super resolution turned all the way up everything epic the only thing we do have turned off is the geometry because i don't like that setting at all and with these settings we got around 80 fps on 4k which was pretty decent then we turned off just the super resolution to see what it would do and we got up to 115 fps which is pretty solid however it's still not exactly where we want to be with fortnite so now's the time for the settings you really want. We turned off reflections, global illuminations, and shadows. That gave us over 200 FPS, which was pretty awesome. You're, we're talking 4K Fortnite here. All the other stuff's on Epic, except for the stuff I just told you I turned off. 200 FPS, pretty awesome. But just for the last thing, we turned everything else on low, except for the view distance. We put that on Epic, and we got 240 FPS pretty solidly for the most part. That's 4K Fortnite. At 1440p, we got a lot of the same. Epic everything, all the way turned back up. We got 130 FPS this time. So 50 FPS more than 4K. Then we turned off the super resolution and we got 140 to 150 FPS. Then again, off with the reflections, illuminations, and shadows. That gave us over 280. So we're talking fully epic settings on the bottom part of Fortnite. So that's your view distance, your textures, your post-processing, that stuff at the bottom there. All the way turned to epic and we're getting over 280 FPS. Now, if you were to run this in performance mode, you would get well over 300 FPS. So I didn't see the point in that. So if you're worried about that, when you're spending this much money, don't be worried. It's Fortnite. It'll be all right. It's still pretty awesome. Now, to wrap up these benchmarks, we're going to put this PC to a little bit tougher test with Starfield, Cyberpunk 2077, and Red Dead Redemption 2. In Starfield at 4K Ultra settings, no FSR enabled, we got 100 FPS fighting these bandits, pirates, uh, I lose track. Same thing at 1440p, Ultra preset settings, no FSR, we got 120 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 with no ray tracing, but the Ultra preset settings and no FSR, we only got 70 FPS. But again, this is a pretty demanding game. But at 1440p with the same type of settings, we got 142 FPS, which is pretty awesome. In Red Dead Redemption 2, no upscaling technologies used at 4K maximum settings, we got 111 FPS. And at 1440p on the same max settings, we got 168 FPS. This was a really fun project that I wouldn't have been able to do without my customer's help because he ordered such a great PC. But if you need something cheaper to look at, then go watch this video.